Oh, I'll tell you what, it's nice going away, but it's always nice to come back. And I've fixed my flag in the background as well. I saw people complaining about it. It's like, well, maybe it was rising, but okay, fine. I hung it the other way, so now it's the right way up. Listen, right, I'm kind of new to the whole flag thing. I'm not used to that sort of... I'm not used to using flags. That's the thing. It's it's something that is kind of hammered into you to be a bit weird as, like, I guess, sort of, you know, a sort of middle-class, university-educated person. It becomes a bit... I don't know. You just... You're just not meant to do it. It's it's vulgar to that sort of class, but I I actually I actually think it matters, and I think it me it is meaningful, and so that's why I have them. But anyway, let's talk about the thing I was going to talk about. So, the executive behind that Gillette ad says brands have a responsibility to challenge toxic masculinity. This is why Gillette have gone woke. This is the person who is creating all of Gillette's progressive marketing and alienating their traditional audience. Let's have a look at what she has to say for herself. Bullying, Me Too movement, and toxic masculinity are the first audible phrases in a Gillette ad from earlier in this this January. You remember the, 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 the best men can be Gillette ad, which basically was an attack on masculinity, because that's all all of this is. I've been watching a lot of Good Morning Britain recently, and Piers Morgan, Morgan's really struggling with this, and I feel I feel really bad for him. I was just watching a bunch of their clips on their, their YouTube channel, and I feel really bad for him, because it really is, and he's... I'll do a proper video on this for my main channel, um, but it's, it's one of those things where you can tell this is all one way and none of the other, and it's being done as a deliberate attack on masculinity, and it's only an attack on masculinity. As soon as he tries to apply the same standards to women, they'll say, oh, well, you know, gender roles are constraining. It's like, well, why do you call yourselves a women's refuge or a women's thing or whatever? They'll start getting defensive and saying, well, women need this, women need that. It's like, okay, well, how about men need things as well? You know, when Piers Morgan is saying, well, men need stoicism, men need bravery, men need these things to feel self-respect, they just sit there laughing as if this is a joke. And he's getting clearly upset about it, and I can understand why. I think it's legitimate that he would be, because they're attacking the core of what he feels to be a man. And so it's just like, how can you sit there and laugh at the idea of attack, of, of making someone feel insecure? Why would you do that? That strikes me as the sort of thing that bullies do. And so anyway, bullying, Me Too movement and toxic masculinity, yeah, this is what you guys are all about. You're bullying, it's about you, and you hate masculinity. That's what this is. You're going to bully people because you feel bullied by masculinity, I presume. So they describe the video and say the video, less than two minutes long, had over 4 million views in 48 hours, and there's more than 30 million today. Bravo, bravo. How did the public take it? Should we have a quick look? Oh, what's that? 793 upvotes, 1.4 million downvotes. What are you doing that's pissing off so many people? Have you considered that this is not all just one way? Seems the majority of people don't like what you're doing. Just saying. Anyway, Gillette's ad garnered both immense praise and intense criticism. Some people took to social media and vowed to boycott Gillette or argued it was a global assault on masculinity. It's obviously is i mean just look at the fucking look at the things you've got here bullying me too movement and toxic masculinity how is this not how is it anything other than but anyway others applauded the brand's new messaging or pointed out that the backlash only signals the dire need to discuss toxic masculinity that's right if you feel like you're under attack when we're attacking you then that proves that you need to change how about this that proves you need to leave people alone that proves you need to just let people get on with their lives because masculinity is not inherently toxic, although that's all we ever hear. I mean, do you ever present a positive vision of masculinity that you think is not toxic? Of course not. You can't do it. It looks like femininity when you do that. It doesn't look like masculinity. But anyway, sorry, I'm not going to go on all, quite yet, even though I've gone on quite enough already. Undeniably, the controversial ad was a bold commentary on negative masculine stereotypes and importantly, which is all of them, let's be honest, uh, from the p feminist perspective, and importantly, offers a different model of masculinity. Well, what's the model? What are you, what are you doing? Before popular media portrayed problematic behaviours like sexism and aggression for men, which helped normalise such hyper-masculine behaviour in real life. That's right. That's right. It needed media to do that. It's not that all throughout history, men were masculine. Men were, I mean, like, oh God, there was no sexism before popular media, was there? Fucking hell. Men were not aggressive. <laughs> like, 
These aren't natural facets of being male and female, sexism and distinguishing between two genders, and men being aggressive, because frankly, women like that, let's be honest, ladies, which help normalize hypermasculine behavior in real life. This is all nonsense. It's hyperbolic nonsense. Like, if you walk around, this is just not what's happening. People are just wandering around their daily lives. Like, this is not real. But anyway, Gillette's campaign urges men to challenge the stereotype and provide a better example for the next generation. No, it prov it challenges that it's in it's trying to make them be less masculine, and I think that that is bad for young men. I think it's bad for young men to be less masculine. I think that we need more masculinity. I think that young men need masculinity, and they need it as a kind of structure and guide to their behavior through life. Because young men are strong, and when you are strong, you need to know what kind of behavior is appropriate or not. These people are going to cause accidental damage, and so they need guidance from older men who have a particular code of conduct that they can pass down. That's something that we're lacking, and that's something that young men definitely need. Okay? I'm just... Just take it, take it as my lived experience as a young man and then a fa an older man and then a father, okay? I'm just saying this is my lived experience. I know this to be true from what I have perceived empirically, okay? So, I mean, you, I'm sure you've got a lot of studies that are going to disprove what I believe, but, like, these are just, oh, look, study that confirms what I believe I have found. Fuck off. <laughs> like, I don't care anymore. And this is what I mean when I say it's all one way and none of the other, right? Gillette, which is owned by Procter & Gamble, is not the only brand using its market reach to spark dialogue about traditional gender roles. As if it's fucking Gillette's job to do this, right? Other Procter & Gamble brands have done so. Feminine hygiene brand always, hashtag like a girl campaign, challenges what it means to act like a girl. Yes, it's getting girls to act more like men. To break down the distinction between the genders. But in this case, it's positive. In the case of men, it's negative. Well, diapers brand, you mean nappies, Americans, Pampers ads show fathers taking an equal role in parenting. Yeah, but that's not what most people want. Most mothers want to spend more time with their children, and most fathers would rather work and provide. This is something they feel comfortable doing. And it doesn't work the other way around. Like, I've seen so many articles of things, like, there was one that really stuck in my mind from probably about three or four years ago, where the woman was very high-earning. Very high earning. And the man decided, right, okay, well, I'll stay at home and look after the kids. And she, he quit his job. He then started raising the kids. And every day she'd come home and he'd look fresh-faced and he'd be running around having fun with the kids. He'd be having a great time. And she'd come back frazzled and tired and drained from long work in the office. And she started feeling really resentful. Really fucking resentful that he was just playing out in the sun with the, with his kids and and having fun with them, and she was trapped in a dreary office for hours and hours and hours. And then she realised she wasn't even finding him attractive. She didn't want to have sex with him. She didn't see him as like you know an alpha male, a masculine provider. She didn't find him hot. And I'm not bloody surprised. Why would she? You know, if women, masculine roles exist because women find them attractive and they perform a necessary function in the formula, formation of families, right? If that doesn't exist, and the same with feminine role, by the way, for men, and if that doesn't exist, then what is the woman finding attractive? What is there for her to appear to appeal to her? Like, what gets her juices flowing? You know what I mean? Turns out not much, at least from these anecdotal articles that i've read from women who are actually living the experience of it but anyway never mind elsewhere men's fashion brand bonobos has a campaign titled hashtag evolve the definition in which men including trans men and men of color talk about how multifaceted masculinity could be yeah you're trying to destruct deconstruct it i mean it is multifaceted but it's one of those things where i just can't help but feel in the way that it's being framed it's framed as a we need to reduce masculinity but anyway, uh, men's groom brand Axe, which is owned by Unilever, also shifted its advertising direction from emphasizing man's sexual prowess to showing that masculinity can be about celebrating individuality and caring about a woman's pleasure as opposed to hyper-masculine stereotypes. Okay, but that's not inspirational, is it? <laughs> you know, hey, did you know that you can serve someone else? Our brand will help you do that. It's like, <laughs> what? Okay, if that's what you want to appeal to, but I'm not buying your product on that ground. I mean, I, and no one needs a cut. <laughs> No one needs these people to be the ones doing it. Anyway, there was so much to say, I forgot we were even going to read the interview that she had given. 
In recent years, numerous brands have started approaching conversations about masculinity or what masculinity means in their marketing. Is it important for brands to do this? If so, why? She says, we believe that advertising has the power to change mindsets. Well, it does if you start imposing a message on people, and then every day you put that message in their face, then yeah, sure, you can socially engineer things in that way. That's the sort of thing Goebbels would have said, I imagine. Is it responsible that you do that, though? Maybe you should just say, hey, this is our brand. In many cases, it really influences popular culture because it's seen so many times and with such frequency. See, they know they know what they're doing. And it's so a very big part of our gender equality effort is focused on leveraging our voice in advertising and media. So they have a social engineering agenda regarding, quote, gender equality, which is a thing that really doesn't exist and won't ever exist. But OK, the Gillette campaign, which I'm so proud of, takes on this other important conversation about modern masculinity. This campaign puts the spotlight on great men holding other men to the highest standards and really being role models for the next generation. We believe we can spark dialogue that can really motivate change. Yeah, do you remember the, the one where the guy was going to go and approach a woman to talk to her and the other guy steps and says, don't talk to that woman, as if he knows why. As if he knows what she's thinking. As if he knows that she's not looking for a boyfriend or something. As if she's not interested in a conversation, ever. But no... It, don't you do it she is too good for you to approach that's the message and this is the thing it's all about disempowerment for young men and i really can't stand it because that is honestly evil to do i would never say right we need to disempower young women to promote young men that's that's a horrible thing what a horrible thing that would be and yet that's what they're doing to young men the the, the demographic in society that is already failing the worst but anyway Tell us about the thinking behind the Gillette ad. What was really the impetus behind it? I think there are a couple of things. Certainly we encourage all our brands to find their authentic voice in how they want to communicate, c communicate with customers and stakeholders. How about you just sell me the fucking product? So, well, not anymore anyway. But, um... So while it can be motivated by current events and current conversations that are happening, it has to be, it still has to be what's right for the business, for the brands, and for the cons consumers they serve. Otherwise, it's unsustainable, or even worse, it shows up as artificial. It is artificial. It is probably unsustainable. You will probably end up getting woke and going broke. And God bless if you do, because seriously, we don't need corporations trying to tell us what the moral good and bad of life is. That's not your job. You're not equipped to do that because, as you say, your primary concern is to your stakeholders. It is to your business model. I don't want you to have that primary... I mean, it just feels massively artificial and it's totally not necessary. But it is going to be damaging to society and how are we going to hold you account to account for this? When you have busy like eroding if you've been busy eroding gender roles and so now less and fewer and fewer people will get married and have kids and this will actually do damage to our society this will make like it's going to cause long-term economic damage in things like pensions and whatnot it's going to cause like it's going to cause long-term damage in the health service so it will will necessitate mass immigration which will make Further social problems emerge, as they already are in Birmingham. But anyway, I don't want to get off topic. It's just, this is all connected. You know, the, the problems are knock-on problems that hit something else. But anyway, they want to know what they believe in. Oh, sorry. The reality is today, stakeholders of all kinds, whether it's consumers, investors, or employees, still expect more from brands than just selling products. They want to know that what they believe in. They want to know their values. Fuck me. You want ethical corporations. I mean, what happens when we get Islamic corporations? Well, they probably exist. What happens when you get fascist corporations? That's going to be something that's going to have to be censored. How about we just not put values into corporations and they just sell us products? What was wrong with that model? You know, we can go around making the world a better place ourselves, surely. We don't need these corporations to do it for us. And I really, especially the way they're being run, holy shit, it is tyrannical. But anyway... They want to know the people behind them and the actions that are taking on important issues. Okay, yeah, how's Susan Wojcicki's YouTube channel going? You know, how was the YouTube Rewind? Was that good? I mean, it seems that you guys are really disconnected to what people actually think. Most people, like Piers Morgan did a, like a, a, a survey on Good Morning Britain's Twitter feed saying, you know, do you agree with him on gender roles or do you agree with the radical progressives on gender roles? It was 96% in his favour with 4% on their side. And so he's just like, well, there we go then. <laughs> like, yeah, it's the argument over. People agree with me and not you. It's completely true. Again, I'll, I'll get to all this. I know I'm going on, but there's, there's just so much here. 
that needs to be talked about. Anyway, they want to know the people behind them and the actions they're taking on important issues. And what's the what, and that was the impetus for Gillette. We're saying we are a brand that for many years has shaped perceptions of masculinity and have helped create what it means to be the best a man can get. Man, you are giving yourselves way too much credit. <laughs> Like, or at least for me, I I do not give a damn what Gillette thinks about masculinity. Like this, this I I just have no I have no interest in it until they start attacking masculinity. You just be be what other people like. I love the way that you think you're the is it the chicken or the egg? Oh no, we're we're the egg that creates the chicken. That's what it is, Gillette. It's like, are you fucking serious? Do you think masculinity didn't exist in a, like, as a conception before Gillette came around? All you've done is been traditionally masculine, and now you're like, hmm, maybe we should be something completely different, the radical opposite of that. It's like, why do you think people are complaining? Why do you think people are complaining? Anyway. And anyway, so. And that the, the shift that the brand team made going is the best man can get, because then it's in his favour, it's for him, to the best man can be, as in he now has to serve others. He has to do something for someone else. It's not about for you now, it's about for them. So, okay, great. So, um, the Gillette ad caused quite a stir. What do you think about the public's reaction to the ad, both good and bad? Honestly, it goes to a couple of things. It goes to my first point that says the brand has to have an authentic voice, right? Doesn't feel like an authentic voice. You can't jump onto something because you think it's popular in any way that's not congruent and consistent with what the brand believes. This is not congruent and consistent with what the brand believes. This is the total opposite message of what your brand has always promoted. It's the complete reverse. You seem, as you say, to be jumping onto something because you think it's popular in any way that's not... Like, that That seems to be what you're doing. This is a, like a fad among the intelligentsia of the West to attack masculinity and traditional values. And so it's like, right, okay, we're jumping on this fad. It's like, this is such corporate bullshit. And the thing is, progressives eat it up because it's saying what they want to hear. It's mental. You should never be trusting a corporation with any kind of ethical decisions, frankly. And so the Gillette team knew very well that this campaign would spark dialogue, and it certainly did. Yes, see, they are manipulating us. They're doing it for their own profit. They tell us as much. But importantly, as we went through the campaign, the sentiment became much more positive than negative. Bullshit! You're just ignoring the negative sentiment. You're blocking them, presumably, or deplatforming them. Anyway, you got tremendous kudos. If you think about Generation Z millennials under 30, those consumers expect brands not to be silent on important issues. That's only because you've put it into their heads. Brands should not have a particular political bent. This is the point of capitalism, to anonymize the marketplace so it can just be people operating freely in society rather than an ethical agenda which has to have guards, it has to have borders and boundaries and people dictating to others what things are, have to be. If you do that, then you start creating factions within society. Fucking hell. No one understands any of this, apparently. No one understands any of this. The market has a moral good bound up within it. And it's the anonymization of the economic activity of society. That's the moral good of the market. That's why socialism is evil. That's why what you're doing is a form of evil. It's good for us to not know who's trading with who in, like, basic exchanges. You know, that's not meant to be something that the market is for. It's just meant to be a facilitator. The moral, the, the telos of what we use the market for is to, down to us. You know, we choose that, not them. And they're reversing this dynamic completely. But anyway, I'm just saying you're becoming fascists, okay? The, the, uh, this kind of, like, top-down ethical agenda was exactly the kind of, the social engineering ethical agenda is the sort of thing that the fascists used to do. This is not the sort of night watchman model of the liberal state and liberal market, you are doing the wrong thing, in my opinion. But I say that because I'm a fucking liberal. And you guys aren't. You're fucking fascist. They expect brands to take these on. And so we've got very positive comments. I mean, the role of men matters in this space, right? Yeah, but who gets to dictate that? Who gets to dictate the role of men? Should it not be men themselves? Or should it be corporations? But anyway... Men need to play an import, equally important role as, as women in eliminating bias, promoting equality, and demonstrating positive social and cultural behavior. But you don't get to decide this. And I'm not necessarily for equality. That's the thing. I'm for liberty. And liberty is the enemy of equality. I think we should all be free to act as we want, as long as we're not 
infringing on each other's rights. So if you guys leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. And yeah, you're right, that won't end up with equality. That'll end with a blooming garden of difference. But everyone will be different in their own unique way. We won't all be the fucking same. And I think that sounds way more appealing than this. But hey, that's that's just me. I'm just this backworldsman man, aren't I? You know, I just think these things that used to be better, well, they probably were actually better qualitatively. Anyway, I'll stop ranting. I can't help it. There's, Like I said, there's just so much here that's pissing me off. Basically, men need to get on their knees and do their bit for progressivism. That's what they're saying. You know, all too often we talk about gender inequality as a woman's problem. No, it's not. It's a feminist problem. It's not a bloody woman's problem. Most women are not feminists. 90% of women in this country, my country, are not feminists. Therefore, it's not their fucking problem. They're free. They have self-determination. They, like I said, like every single sentence has so much laden in it, right? Women in this country are free. They can do as they like, and it's not my problem. It's not my business. Just like what I do is not their problem or their business either. So how about we all just leave each other alone? Anyway... <laughs> But it has to be something that's an issue for us. It's about men and women advocating for a more equal world. I don't want a more equal world. I want a more free world. A more equal world is us all in chains, okay? It's us all reduced to the lowest common denominator. I don't want that. I want people to bloom in their own separate ways. That's a better role for all of us. And <laughs> what can you do? No, it's not. It's only good for the people at the very bottom. For the vast majority of people, that's fucking bad. <laughs> God! Totally, totally overrun by communism at this point, in my opinion. Even our corporations. Social communism. Honestly, I, I said that, and, like, people got really offended. I'm like, no, no, this is definitely a social form of communism, isn't it? Like, this is... You're talking about society, and you want everyone to be the same. You want everyone to be exactly the fucking same. How is that not a social version of communism? What's the difference? And so we created the film knowing very well it would spark conversation, but it was so congruent with what the brand stood for and the brand voice was that we stood by it 100%. Yeah, so fuck you, that's what. You know, I'm probably not going to go through the rest of this, in this video because I've been talking for ages now. I might finish this off in another video at some point because this is just... 